Kermit is ready to return to the pond with today's game, Frogger, this time for your Intellivision, and really dig these old JCPenney price stickers. And I like how it started out way up at $37.95 and fell down, down, down to $9.99. Maybe that's why Frogger looks so shocked. I'm that cheap. Let's go ahead and take Frogger, pop it in my television, and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Arr. Frogger was published by Parker Brothers and carries a copyright year of 1983. It is based on the 1981 Konami arcade game, which was distributed by Sega. The manual opens with the following. Leaping Frogger. Home may look like it's only a hop, skip, and a jump away, but looks can be deceiving. First, there's a dangerous highway to hop across, full of cars and trucks. Then there's a swirling river to leap, full of frog-eating creatures. How's Frogger going to get home safely? By letting you hop him on his way. Guide Frogger safely through the perilous journey, and you'll jump for joy. Frogger is a single screen action game for one or two players alternating. It has four game variations. Games 1 and 3 start out easier than games 2 and 4. In games 1 and 2, you can safely wrap around the screen while floating on objects. But in games 3 and 4, floating off screen will cost you a life. The goal of the game is to guide your frog into one of the empty home bays at the top of the screen. The game did not come with an overlay, but it's extremely easy to control, using the disc to move your frog. You could hold down the disc to keep moving in one direction, but for me this doesn't always work well, as sometimes there was a hesitation before this took effect, and in this game, a hesitation can cost you a life. So for the most part, I like to move Frogger one hop at a time by quickly touching the disc in the direction I want to go. On the bottom half of the screen, you'll lose a life if you are hit by a vehicle. On the top half of the screen, you'll lose a life if you fall into the water, because as everybody knows, one of the deadliest elements to any frog is water. Some turtles that you can hop on can dive underwater. If you're on them when they dive, you lose a life. When the difficulty increases, or on the harder difficulty settings, you also have to avoid snakes, otters, who will try to knock you off whatever you are floating on, and crocodile heads, although you can ride on the backs of crocodiles. Crocodile heads can appear in empty bays, but so can flies, which you can eat for bonus points. There's also a pink frog that will appear on one of the logs. By contacting her, she will jump on your back and you can try to take her safely home for bonus points. Not only do you have to avoid touching enemies in water, but you also have to get into an empty bay on time. If your timer on the bottom of the screen runs out before you do so, you'll lose a life. Scoring wise, you get 10 points for every jump forward. 50 points for jumping into an empty bay, 1,000 points every time you clear a level, 200 points if you take a pink frog to an empty home bay, 200 points for eating a fly, and bonus points for any remaining time left on the timer. You start the game with 5 frogs, and every time you score 20,000 points and have fewer than 4 frogs left, you get an extra frog. Graphically speaking, the game is nice and colorful. My only minor complaint is that it seemed a little lazy to make the crocodile simply by adding a head to a group of the logs, almost making him look like a crocodile with a Tootsie Roll body. Sound and music wise, the sounds were simply okay, but the music is really solid. Unfortunately though, when the opening level theme plays, the timer starts, and the theme stops when you move. This means to get to listen to it, you have to sacrifice a portion of your timer. Family friendly wise, the game would most likely get an E for everyone rating if it was released today. At the time I researched on eBay including shipping, loose copies were going for $6 and complete were going for $10 to $16. So what did I think of Frogger on the Intellivision? Frogger is a game that I can enjoy on almost any system and the Intellivision version is no exception. While I do prefer playing Frogger with a D-pad or a joystick, and while there were a few times when my frog did not go where I wanted him to go costing me a life, Overall, the disc works pretty well for this game. And as an overall package, while the game does nothing to really wow me and stand out from other ports of the game, it is still a solid port of an enjoyable arcade game. So where am I going to rank Frogger? I'm looking in the middle of my rankings alongside some other solid titles. I do like Frogger more than Space Armada at 11, but I do prefer Demon Attack at 10. So out of the 22 games I've now ranked, Frogger is hopping into the 11 position. Nothing about this version of Frogger really stands out above the others, but it's still an enjoyable game on the Intellivision. But that's only one guy's opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please click like and subscribe. Follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter. And check out some of my many other videos covering retro video games, toys, mini arcades, plug and plays, and more. At this time, I'd like to thank Jose for supporting the show on Patreon. Thank you, Jose. You too can help support the show, gain access to exclusive content, and be able to vote on future games I review by signing up at patreon.com slash gamer. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time in the next episode of the Nosewear Gamer. Take care, and if you're a frog, always beware of water. It's deadly.